Hi, and thank you for joining Citroen Cooperman's COVID-19 Transition Playbook video series. During this series, we will be interviewing different franchisors on their experiences in dealing with the current pandemic. My name is Kim Kramer, and I'm a member of the firm's Franchise Accounting and Consulting Practice. Today, I'm very excited to be video conferencing in Gwen Graham, President of Miller's Roast Beef. Gwen, thank you, and welcome to the webinar. Thank you for having me today. So before we get started, if you want to um, kind of just give everyone a little bit of background on your company, how you got started, and where the company was prior to COVID-19. Sure. Um, so Miller's Roast Beef was started almost 50 years ago. Um, we are a third generation sandwich brand. We operate in the Northeast. And um, we, our signature product is a authentic, classic roast beef sandwich and the most amazing fry you'll ever have. Um, and we have been serving this product since the beginning. Um, the, the product is sliced to order. Um, it's cooked in-house every day. Um, it's a high quality certified Angus beef. So it's something that we take a lot of pride in. Uh, making sure that we're sourcing a product that um, has has been carefully inspected. It's very important in this day and age that you know people feel that they are the choices they are making. They're confident in those choices, and so that's you know part of our decision um, in the product that we that we source. Um, they're sourced from family ranchers all across the United States, so they just they go through a really high um, high quality inspection process. Um, as a company prior to um, COVID-19, and thankfully still after, you know, we have um, our corporate units that we're operating, mm -hmm. and we are engaged in the sales of our franchise opportunity, um, and that hasn't stopped um, right. since, since COVID, thankfully. Wonderful. All right, so I guess we'll kind of get into this pandemic and how it's affected your operations. I know you're a multi-unit QSR based out of Rhode Island. Um, I believe currently just company-owned locations. So how have those company-owned locations been impacted by COVID-19 and has it affected your operations at all? So we are, um, we're one of the very few lucky ones that have been able to continue to operate um, throughout this crisis. I, I think it has a lot to do um, with our longevity um, and you know the fact that we're a trusted brand mm -hmm. in our, um, our communities. Um, we obviously March, April, and May, I think for anyone, um, no matter what business you were in, I think we can all say that we, um, it was very scary um, in March, April, and May, but we were still able to continue to operate. You know, we still had um, decent sales, our staff stuck with us. And so we could still, you know, continue to serve the community who, who was in need of, of food at the time. They wanted to be able to get food from um, a trusted source. They, they didn't want to go into the markets during that time because there were too many people there. Um, you know, and we were able to make changes to our business model to make sure that we were able to service those customers in a way that, um, you know, made them feel safe. Um, we typically see, you know, increases every year. So when we compare our sales from year to year, period to period, it's always, it's always in the positive upswing. Um, so having that March, April, and May, which was obviously less than normal, was very scary. But, you know, we're so proud that June and July um, is, is, in, we're about nine to fourteen percent higher than last year's June to July. So, in addition to everything that's happening, we're actually on the upswing. We're doing better this year than we were last year. Um, you know, despite COVID um, happening. Well, that's amazing that you guys have been able yeah. to adapt to all the changes and restrictions that have been put in place. So that's really it's fantastic. Yeah. Um, have you had to make any employee? cuts or budget cuts due to this or since you've been doing so well it's kind of been status quo with with that end of the operations no there's there's definitely you know when you go through a crisis like this you you have to look at your business and you have to look at where you know where are you going to make changes changes will have to be made um and and where can you make them to to least you know affect your your team um and your customers right you don't want any of your changes to affect either one of those um, so for um, 
for our team members, our employees, we haven't had to cut any hours. In, in fact, we've we've created jobs um, as a result of this because the business model has changed. You know, we were takeout um, heavy before this, but even now, um, our dining rooms just just opened, and we only have like two tables. But up until last week, um, our dining rooms were still closed, so we were 100% takeout. Um, and, you know, we had to make changes to our operations to make sure that that food was packaged fast, packaged properly and delivered to the customer, um, you know, in a timely manner. So we definitely bumped up our, you know, our employee um, count and, and jobs. Um, but we did have to make we had to make changes to, to budgets, especially budgets centered around um, food cost and paper cost. Um, so for paper costs, I mean, it's just gone through the roof because everything that we're doing now is takeout. So we've, you know, transitioned over to just a, a lot more paper products having to be purchased to service those customers. Um, and the food, food has been a big, big deal. It's gotten better in the past uh, 30 days, thank God. But there was a point where, because of the meat crisis that was happening um, in the cattle industry, we our cost of goods sold tripled. So while we normally pay, you know, three something a pound for the beef that we buy, at the height of the crisis um, in the meat industry during COVID, we were paying nine sixty nine a pound, nine seventy nine a pound, um, and that was that was a challenge. We had to figure out how we were going to absorb that cost um, because we couldn't pass that on to the customer that that it w wouldn't be possible so we had to look at our um, our our budgets and we had to look at how we offer our products and encourage customers to buy those sides and those drinks because that would make up for the difference you know every sandwich we sold we were losing money on we weren't there was no profit but the hopes was that we could sell that side and sell that drink or that cookie or that dessert um, that, you know, we'd ha hopefully have a profit at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, but those were some pretty, pretty big changes and challenges. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, during this time, the fact that you were able to create jobs is pretty pretty amazing to be honest and and for the for the food costs is it all was it all locally sourced type of food or beef I should say or did you were you able to go kind of outside and see other sources that had a little bit of competitive pricing at all or everyone was kind of in the same boat well we, you know we have a really strong commitment to our product yeah. um, and we didn't we didn't want to I mean sure we could have gone and found uh, beef that was um, lower cost or lower quality mm -hmm. but um, you know, that's not fair to anybody. Um, yeah. and, and we're committed to, to the product. We're committed to making sure our customers, um, always get that, that quality. So while it, it could have been an option, um, we did, we didn't, I mean, we did make different marketing, um, efforts to market other products besides mm -hmm. roast beef, um, because we do have a tremendous amount of other offerings that are really, really good, despite, you know, 90% of what we do is roast beef. But we, um, we, we, we made some marketing pushes to push some of those other products that people maybe haven't had a chance to try in hopes that they would purchase those um, instead. Great. Yeah. Brand, yeah. Is, brand and quality is everything, right? So. It sure is. Um, so during this crisis, since you guys seem to have been doing, faring well during the crisis, did you have to pursue any financial help, getting any PPP loans or alternative financing during this time? Yeah, I mean, we we did because, you know, when this first hit, nobody knew what was going to happen. Um, I remember sitting in my kitchen in March and this was right in the beginning. It was like the first or second day after I think uh, this this emergency stay of emergencies went into place, but we could still operate as a, you know, as a restaurant. I remember sitting in my kitchen saying my husband and I, we need to do something. We don't know what is going to happen. You know, we know that this was day one of sales with a state of emergency, which was uh, horrendous to have to even go through. Um, and, and we looked at that and we said, we need to do something because we have no idea what's going to happen. So at that um, time, um, I remember we um, immediately went online and filed for the EIDL yep. um, that was available. 
um, for the disaster loan um, because we have no idea what was going to happen, you know, and, and good thing we did because it helped with the, the, the crisis that hit with the meat um, prices. It helped with the crisis that hit with the whole, you know, March, April, May, that quarter um, being um, much, much lower um, than our traditional sales. Um, so, you know, that was, uh, something that we are so glad that we, we did. It was, it was a game, uh, battle mode, excuse me. I, I just, we sat there and we we're like, all right, what are we going to do? Because we have bills coming up mm -hmm. and how are we going to pay those bills? If our sales are where they are, our sales have always been consistent. So we've always been able to know, I mean, to the day we know, like on a Friday, our sales will be X in January. Um, and on a Friday in June, it will be Y. Um, and we use that information. We rely on that information to help with you know, spending and budgets and planning. Um, so it was it was challenging. Um, and, we, you know, we also applied for the PPP um, because we, again, had no idea what would happen. You know, we didn't know that in June things would start to get better. And... Um, you know, we were able to pass that on to our employees. You know, we gave them a, an eight week um, hourly wage increase, very substantial because they stuck with us and they did not leave during COVID. They did not take the easy, you know, road out and, um, you know, go on unemployment. They, they, they stuck by us. They helped um, to continue, you know, our operations. Without them, we wouldn't have been able to continue. Um, and so, you know, we were able to take that PPP money and use it to reward them and give them extra money every, um, every paycheck. Um, I think other than that, the one other thing that was really, really helpful um, was the fact that we were able to call our existing banks that we have our SBA loans with. Mm -hmm. And um, even before anybody knew anything, our banks agreed to do a three month, um, no payment necessary. They'll just add it onto the end. So we could have three months of not making payments. Um, and then just add that onto the end of the, the life of the loan, which was amazing. Um, and then the SBA came out with, they were going to make six months payments for anybody that had an existing SBA loan as well. Um, and that was free and clear, like six months of the loan that we don't have to pay back. So that, that was, you know, a third thing that was very, very helpful during this time. Absolutely, that's huge. Um, mm -hmm. And giving your employees an, a bonus during this time, I mean, this kind of goes into my next question is, I know teamwork and positivity is a big part of your company. And, and I was gonna ask how you kind of manage to keep that overall within your operations to push the culture and keep the brand strong and have everyone stay positive during that time. Yeah, I mean, that was a huge piece of it, um, being able to do that for them. Uh, with the PPP funds. We, um, you know, we also do things like that are very simple, but make a huge difference in their lives. Um, just keeping their hours consistent. Um, you know, we commit to them, even if our business uh, days are slow, that we just didn't expect them to be slow. We, we don't necessarily send people home early or cut their hours. You know, we maintain their hours for them. And, and, because of this, they can maintain their bills and um, it, it helps with the morale because then they're able to know what's coming in um, despite you know our, our business maybe being slower than usual. Um, we do little things. So you know during during COVID, we did little things um, such as right in the very, very beginning, we gave everybody fifty dollars to go and just buy cleaning supplies for the home um, because a lot of you know a lot of the staff they, they don't have that extra money to, go out and spend um, unnecessarily on, on cleaning supplies. Um, we did things like, you know, buying bulk toilet paper and distributing them, that to them throughout the, throughout the, um, the process. Um, and I think big things to help morale um, mm -hmm. is the um, just check-ins with them um, mentally, you know, checking in because there has been a, this has been a huge um, experience for people to go through. So just checking in with them to, to make sure they're okay. Um, Absolutely. And, and, and a simple thanks, just a thank you. Yeah. Goes, goes a long way. way. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's probably one of the most um, inspiring, I feel like stories I've heard from many of my clients. There's not many of my clients have been opened and operating to be able to provide all of these things for their employees. So it really is 
truly amazing what you guys have been able to do during all of this. We we are we are lucky. We yeah. are we are blessed. Um, it's you know we it's hard work every year, every day, every minute. It's hard work, um, and and we know that, and we don't we don't take any of it for granted. So yeah. that's yeah. great. And I'm sure your employees appreciate it. Yeah. Um, I guess switching now to the customer side of things, um, as you reopened. How did you manage customer confidence? Did you take any steps, change your processes or procedures on things that you were doing in-house to create that customer confidence during this time? Yeah, we, so one of the things we committed to early on was our um, ad spend or marketing spend. We, we didn't cut it. Um, you know, we said we have to stick to this, um, but instead of marketing or, um, doing advertisement centered around, you know, our product or, you know, our brand, we felt it was very important to shift that, that messaging to consumers, um, to let them know, you know, what we were doing, um, to keep them safe when they come in for their meals, to keep our employees safe. So we did a lot of marketing messaging, um, email blasts, social media posts, with them um, often, you know, at least weekly, um, telling them, you know, the different things that that we were doing. We, um, like I said in the beginning, we, we're a trusted brand, you know, and we wanted them to continue to um, feel that they could trust us and and be open and just let them know everything that we we were doing. Um, you know, we kept them in the loop constantly, obviously on the the extra sanitation, you know, that we've been doing, but to be quite frankly, you know, we, we already did most of these things as a brand. Um, no one had to tell us that, you know, every two hours you should disinfect high touch surfaces. We, we always did it. Um, unfortunately there are people out there that, that don't do that. Um, but, it, but we've always, you know, it's something that we've always been committed to. Um, so, but even with things like um, with our, our staff, like anyone that has a symptom relating to COVID, like they're automatically out. Like if they call out sick because they um, say they have a headache or a stomach ache or, you know, something like that, even if it's not a fever, um, they're they're out for, for two weeks or until cleared by their doctor um, because we can't take any chances. Mm -hmm. we, we don't know if that will get worse or not. Um, and we, we have to protect um, our, our employees. We have to protect our customers and vendors that come into the um, restaurant. So um, that that's, you know, very important to us. One thing we never did before, we, we don't have drive throughs um, mm -hmm. And so one permanent process change of our restaurant as a result of this is curbside delivery. It sounds so basic. Um, and so, you know, why weren't you doing this before? But no one really ever asked for it because we've been around so long. People, they, you know, call in their orders, they come in, they pick it up and they leave. Um, but this is a change that now is permanent as part of our culture. You know, this is available to you um, going forward, you know, if you are someone that needs that. Um, and we're finding a lot of people need it because they don't feel comfortable going out still or or because they have young children in the car and they don't want to take them out. So um, that's been that's been kind of a nice um, change. That's true. You don't really think about the people with kids coming in. No, that no. Up a meal. So yeah. permanent changes, I guess, too, besides these temporary ones, for sure. Yeah. Um, and you guys must be doing a good job since you keep having your customers have been um, very loyal, I should say, to your to your brand. So yeah. um, I guess let's talk franchising for a little bit. Um, where do you see or hear yourselves going on the franchise development side? Um, I'm not even sure if this has even been a current focus of you and your company or or if it's something that you kind of put on the back burner until this passes or if it's something that you've kind of still been working on while this is all going on? No, this is um, something that we are 100% focused on and actually refocusing our, our efforts on because, well, number one, we're a brand that didn't shut down. We didn't have to. We mm -hmm. operated throughout all of this. And that um, that says a, a lot about, about who we are, our product. Um, you know, before this, we, we touted that we were recession proof, you know, because we've been around for all this time. Um, now we can say we're pandemic proof, you know, that's, that's a big deal. Yeah. Um, and so on the franchising side, you know, we're, we're, we're using that as we go forward. Um, 
we're redefining our uh, campaigns for lead generation. We just finished talking about that this week. We, um, you know, are, are focusing more on, on different um, targets, uh, individuals, franchisees, because there are a lot of people right now that um, are out of a job that were downsized. Um, there are other brand owners out there that had to close their units that they've been operating as a franchisee for years. Um, and, and now, you know, we're hoping to get in front of them and to say, hey, listen, you know, take a look at us. We're an opportunity to um, seriously consider, you know, we've stayed open, we're operating and, you know, we're doing, we're doing well. Um, and so we're seeing that, you know, a lot of people um, are asking, are, are inquiring. We're not really seeing a ton of slowdown in the inquiries coming through. I mean, they are definitely still coming through. The leads are still coming through and conversations are still happening, which is, which is very nice. That's awesome. Yeah. I didn't even really think about the fact that you're now pandemic proof, quote unquote. Mm -hmm. I mean, that says a lot for your business. And I think that's a great selling point going forward as you continue to sell and hopefully um, some of these come to fruition over the next few months and and things open. Has anyone kind of gotten to the point where they're potentially buying a unit or opening a unit or is it still in the kind of the development phases? Yeah, so we're, we're so new now in franchise sales. We've really only been selling for a um, little under a year, um, mm. but we've had people reconnect, which is, which is nice. People that were interested a little bit ago, but got maybe um, cold feet or just happy where they were, um, who have reconnected and reached out and started the conversation again. Um, you know, we're in the process of hiring a salesperson as well to handle these inquiries because I'm not a salesperson. Um, my, my husband and myself are amazing um, at support and operations and education and team building. And we really recognize the importance of making sure that someone that comes on board uh, for sales, um, that they have that focus um, because we can't spread ourselves too thin. We need to focus on what's important. Um, so that's been another uh, decision. And, you know, during this uh, pandemic in the past month, we've, you know, made a decision to move forward with that as well. That's wonderful. Well, I yeah. wish you the best in, in your you. future franchise sales. Um, is there any last piece of advice or information you want to share? Um, so I would encourage people to recognize that, you know, nothing no operation or process that you currently have in place is perfect. You should always be looking at holes in your existing operations um, and, and asking, you know, how can I make these things better? Um, I think if you, if you get complacent and think that everything is going just fine and there's no, you know, opportunity for improvement, um, it's, a, it's a bad um, road to go down. So, you know, always be looking at, at those things. Um, and I think be willing to listen to your customers and your employees. Keep your ears open. Be open to listening to them because um, they have good ideas and they might bring some things to your attention that you weren't aware of. Um, and you just you need to be willing to at least listen um, and think think about it how it pertains to your business. All right, well, thank you. That's great advice. And thank you so much for joining us today and sharing your experiences and advice. And I wish you and your business continued success. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much.